Hello everyone, welcome back to Bay Hill Studio. Um, I'm sitting here at my kitchen table and I'm getting ready to make some cheesecloth ghosts and I thought I would show you how to make them. So um, I have done been doing an ornament series for the Polka Dot Chair blog and with Halloween coming up I thought I'd steer away from Christmas ornaments and do a spooky Halloween one. And so we're gonna do um, a mini version of this larger cheesecloth ghost. And it's the same technique for the large one. I'll show you the, the differences as I go. But it's the same technique in the mini ones. I'm thinking we can hang from like the front porch or from the light fixture. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hang it from my light fixture right there. Um, so um, it's just a smaller version, like an ornament size. What you will need is cheesecloth. And right here I have about 20 inch length of cheesecloth. It's folded up. Um, for the larger one, you'll want about a yard of cheesecloth for each ghost. You want to have extra length so it can puddle around like, like this. Look at all that big puddle of cheesecloth. And, and that's kind of what makes it look like a drapey ghost with lots of character. You're gonna want cups. Um, for these smaller ornaments, I am doing, just using these cups, I don't know how many ounces this is. I wanna say about 10 ounces or eight ounces. And then for the larger ones, um, we used two of these red cups, except for, um, let me think. Okay, so I think, I think we used two. No, we used, okay, for the smaller ghost, this one, I used one ornament, I mean, one <laughs> red cup. And then for this taller ghost, this one's a lot taller. And for this one, we stacked, and I'll share pictures at the end. We stacked them like this. So you can stack them up. The whole key is you want the balloon to be able to still sit in the cup. So we stacked it up like an hourglass, taped it, and it was ready to go. So that's for the larger ghosts. For these smaller ones that I'm making, I'm going to use two cups and tape them like this. So I'll put that aside for now. You're going to need some kind of fabric stiffener. This is the one that I'm using today, but I've used um, every kind that I can get my hands on because it's not always easy to find them in stock. So any kind of fabric stiffener. Um, in the old days, I think in my mom's generation, she used uh, starch, but starch is very hard to find. Like liquid starch is hard to find. So I found that fabric stiffener works perfectly. Um, some people I think use um, white glue. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and I don't have a good reason, except that I'm kind of nervous of it breaking down, that it's that it's not gonna hold well, especially school glue. Maybe um, Elmer's glue all uh, might have the strength to hold it, but um, you can try it out. There's no harm in trying it. I have mixed, um, when I did a big batch, I did, well, let's see, we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 10 or 12 of these with a group of young women in our neighborhood for a church event. And these are going to be the centerpieces for the fundraiser. And um, I needed a lot and, and I didn't have a, enough fabric stiffener. So I mixed in this big bowl. I mixed in Mod Podge and probably some glue as well. So you can mix it in. Um, and let's see, you're going to need some tape. You can use um, uh, this is what I have, packing tape, but any tape will work, um, painter's tape, whatever, some balloons. Um, you'll want some clear thread, fishing, clear fishing line works great too, um, to hang it so that it looks like it's floating in the air. You don't want to be able to see that thread. And then some googly eyes or, so this is the large, um, I want to say this is one and a half inch googly eye that I used for the large ghosts. I also used buttons, just some black buttons. And then um, I'm gonna use these smaller googly eyes for the small ghosts that we're working on. Okay, I think that's it. So let's get started. Okay, to start, um, we are gonna pour the fabric stiffener into a bowl. Now this brand I've noticed is um, really liquidy. It's like the consistency of maybe heavy cream. 
So that's great. This, this is working great. The other brands that I've used in the past are more like thick glue and I've watered it down just a little bit so it's easier to work with. Okay, so this is the messy part. Let's see, get my paper towel close by to wipe my hands. So we're going to unfold completely. And um, if you're not sure about your length, actually before we do this, we're gonna blow up our balloon. So I wanna blow it up so it fits like in the size of my palm. Pretty small. Think, think like a, an ornament size. So just like that. And I am going to tape my cup together. Okay. And then you're going to stick your balloon right on top and just kind of tape it in place. Maybe one on each side just to hold it in place. A little piece of tape okay so to test the length of your cheesecloth the best thing to do is while it's dry drape it over and make sure that you're going to have let me turn this down have extra that puddles like that just make sure you've got wow like six or seven inches extending past the base um, that puddles now when it drapes over this part isn't like part of it isn't even going to touch the let me show you it's not going to be long enough it's not going to touch the table and let's turn it around and this part's not touching and that's really okay and you can adjust it but once it's wet it's it's harder to work with and you'll see that and so you just the key is you need something to puddle on the ground and um, if you want this to stand on a table that puddling fabric on the ground is what's going to hold it up. And so you really need something down there. You don't want this to be hanging with and not touching the ground when, um, <laughs> when you let it dry. Now for an ornament, you could, if you're just hanging it, you could, I still like the puddly look. I think that just gives it a, a ghost look. And so I'm still going to do that. Okay. So I'm gonna set this aside just for a minute. And now we are going to um, dip our cheesecloth into the fabric stiffener. All right, so I've got my cheesecloth all opened up. Do not um, put it in the fabric stiffener when it's still folded like that. You've gotta have it opened up. And when we dip it in, just turn it, dip it and turn it and you want it all soaked. I don't want any dry parts like right there. You can see glue and then dry part. No dry parts allowed. So just smoosh it around. This is so fun because you get all gluey and smushy and messy. And there we have it. Just like that because this, oop, look at dry parts. Not okay. We're going to dip it. Um, because this fabric stiffener that I'm using is so much more liquidy than the last one that I used, I really like it because it's, um, it's fast. I don't have to really work it as much. So it's, it's, if it, yours is really thick, just water it down and then look what I'm going to do. I am going to hold the top and kind of squeegee it down, get all that extra fabric stiffener off. For one, it's it's such a mess, it's just going to drip all over, but we don't need it and um, we can use it to make more. So we don't want to waste any of this stuff. And we certainly want to keep the mess down. I usually, um, I should have said this at the beginning, I usually put a tarp or a plastic tablecloth over my table. And because I just finished this project with this neighborhood group of neighborhood girls, um, I, I ran out of both. <laughs> we made a ginormous mess. Okay, I have squeegeed it. So let me wipe my hands a little bit. I mean, they're still gluey looking, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna stick this over here. 
and on to our next step. All right, so I've got my little tower with my balloon at the top. And this part, it might be the trickiest part. So actually, let me put that aside. You're gonna gently and slowly pull apart your cheesecloth. And the reason why it's the hardest part with one person, with two people, you just, one person takes one end, the other takes the other, and it's fast and easy. But with one person, it wants to keep folding in on itself. So just take your time and don't be scared of the mess. And <laughs> that looks pretty bad. So um, this is what I'm talking about. It keeps folding in over on itself. So I'm just going to put it on the balloon at approximately the middle of the length. And then I'm going to stretch it out more over the balloon because this is what's happening. It's just not cooperating. Okay. So I'm going to stretch this out and then I can reposition it. This side hardly has anything on it. So I'm going to kind of lift it over a little bit more and let's see if that's better. All right. Okay. That is better. It didn't look like it was better, but once I unfolded more of the cheesecloth, it just, it's like forever. You just have to keep pulling on it, keep unfolding it. Once I unfolded it, I got some extra length there. So now I am going to puddle it. And like I said, if you want this, I'm gonna put this back so you can see it. If you want this to be standing, then make a big puddle, you know, however you want. However you think if, if there was a ghost wearing a sheet <laughs> over its head and it was touching the ground, how would it look when it was puddling on the ground? Just kind of imagine that. Let it swirl a little bit, all that. Now, I want mine to hang. And so I'm going to kind of bring this in a little bit more and not let it puddle out so far just because I want it to be more kind of almost straight down. Okay, so I think I'm gonna swirl this little piece over on itself. So the reason why I'm using, I'm actually using a Rubbermaid like plastic bin lid. And again, it's because I ran out of tablecloth. So you don't wanna dry this on cardboard because when you when it dries it, and you lift it, it will rip up the cardboard. So it needs to be dried on something like plasticky so that when you pull it up after it dries, it will just peel right up. So let me see if I have one. We did accidentally start to dry them and literally within 10 minutes, we realized, oh, we don't wanna dry it on cardboard because it's gonna make, it's gonna rip up. So let me see if I have one. Uh, I don't have one right here. But yeah, it did rip up pieces of cardboard. So you don't want to do that. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to let this dry as is. And um, after it's dry, we're going to put on the googly eyes. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to quickly show you how I do the larger size as well. Okay, I am back and we're going to quickly make a larger one just to show you how it's done. And I think I'm going to make a taller one. So we'll do the same exact thing. We will stack our cups and tape them together. And I'm using these red cups for this one. And then we'll blow up a balloon and this time we'll blow it up larger. That's, that's pretty good. So um not even soccer ball size this is not super big you can make it as big as you want it really that's that's how big the head of your ghost will be so you can really do it however you want okay so i'm going to tape it one on each side just to hold that balloon in place and i'm going to set that aside and then we're going to get our 
bowl that I accidentally set on my table and now I just left a mess. Okay, there we go. All right, so for this one, I want about one yard of cheesecloth. So again, open it up all the way if you can. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's all opened up just like so. And then again, we're just going to blop it in there and immediately it's going to get all wet. And because it's a little bit larger, I'm going to have more dry spots. So I've just got to really go back in. You can feel them with your hands. And that, just that one and this one, um, this was two bottles of the fabric stiffener in there. I have two mini ones and this larger piece that's already used up two bottles. So this uses up quite a bit, which is another reason why if you're using a different brand that's thicker, I recommend watering it down just so you can make it last a little bit longer. And now we're gonna open it up, see how we did. <laughs> this is not easy. Okay, I've got a few dry spots, so I'm just gonna kind of give it one more dip. And then what I'm gonna do is again, kind of grab a corner and squeegee it. And you can see all of that extra fabric stiffener going back in the bowl. So satisfying. So I'm going to show you what's left after we squeegee it. Remember we had nothing. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> so we got a little bit left. Not enough for a, a whole ghost, unfortunately. Oh, see, and, and I'm just trying to wipe my hands and there's no wiping happening. So that was fun. Um, let's let's give this a go. All right. So we're going to try and open it. And again, with one person, it's, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. So I'm just going to kind of drape this and then unfold and see what happens. Look how much extra is folded up in what looks like not much of a fold but it, there really is a lot. Um, cheesecloth is so thin. So we got a lot over there. Let's see what we get on this side. Okay, not a lot. That's not enough draping, especially for these that are for sure gonna stand on the table. So I'm gonna lift it and scooch it down more. And let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Let's check out this. Oh, what a mess, huh? Okay. Let's pull that down. And this is a lot more fussy because it's a lot more fabric. So just fuss around with it. You have time. You're not in a rush because this, this takes time to dry. And I am just going to let this really puddle down here. And I think I'm just going to turn it this way instead of lifting it. Um, actually I do have to lift it to kind of let it puddle on all sides. That's why this would be better if I had a tablecloth, but it is what it is. All the little, um, when we did, um, set ours on a tablecloth, parts of the table, tablecloth were like crinkled because this, this cheesecloth is so sticky. It was pulling it up as we would reposition it and lay out this to puddle. And it dried kind of in the puddles and it added even more dimension. So it was really okay. Like, don't even worry about that if that happens. Okay, I'm just pulling that down to straighten it a little bit up here. 
And let's give it a turn on this side. You hear my cuckoo clock in the background? I've got, I don't know if you can see it, right there, a German cuckoo clock. And on the hour, plays me a song. Okay. All right. And I think that's puddled. So again, we are going to let this dry. I'm going to let all of these dry and we'll come back tomorrow and we will finish them off. And you're going to, hold on, let me wipe my hands. And you are going to love how this turns out. I have nothing to wipe my hands on to turn this off. <laughs> okay, we'll come back tomorrow. It is the next day. Our ghosts have dried. And so now it's time to um, take out the balloon and the cuts. But first I wanted to show you um, four additional ghosts that I made. I made several. Let's see, I made one, two, three, four, five, six little mini ghosts. And I tried out this um, brand by Plaid Company and it's called Stiffy Fabric Stiffen Stiff Stiffener. And it's like liquid. It's kind of the consistency of milk. It's even more liquid than the last brand that I used. Um, and I only used for all six of, for all five of those, I only used this much. So because it's so liquid, it just soaks in and then you can squeeze out more. So I found that I hardly used any and it worked really, really well. I mean, these turned out just fine. So that was a really good experiment. I got this on Amazon. So I definitely recommend this one. Um, so I just wanna put that one out there. All right, so I took um, the balloons out of several of them and I wanted to, to go over one thing. Yesterday, when I did these, I wanna show you the difference. I forgot to put plastic wrap on top. If you're using a paper cup, this fabric stiffener is gonna to stick to it the same way glue sticks to paper. Um, and so this is not gonna be fun taking this out. This one, I used plastic and you're gonna see the difference. So um, you can pop this with a pin, but nothing's going to happen. It, it might try to slowly deflate, um, but these balloons are not blown up tight. They're not blown up all the way. And so you're just gonna probably not have much success. So what you need to do is pop this with a knife. And I just have a steak knife. However, it's gonna be hard with this because the glue wanted to stick to the cup. So I'm squishing the cup and making sure that it's, it's not attached to the um, cheesecloth. And now I'm gonna take the steak knife and kind of stick it in there and pop this balloon. Uh, it, it quietly popped on its own. Okay, so I'm taking out the cup now. And then you're gonna, the balloon's gonna wanna stick. So just go in there and grab it. And if, it didn't happen this time, but it will happen. I promise. Sometimes if when you pull away the balloon, it makes an indentation, it tries to pull at the cheesecloth, you can just put your hand back in there and fill out the shape. Now I wanted to show you also this one, I cut the cheesecloth shorter so that it's not puddling as much and it's just more drapey. And so you can see how that looks. So it still will stand, but when it's hanging, it's just a little bit less. Um, cheesecloth. So it's, I just want to show you both because yesterday I was telling you not to do that, but why not? Just go for it. All right. So this one, I don't even have to pop this. It's just sliding right out like that. And then the saran wrap is wanting to stick to it. So I'm just going to pull it out. Done. And let's see, we've got another one. We'll just see what happens with all of these. They might all be different. Nope, this one wants to just slide right out. That saran wrap makes all the difference, you guys. Easy peasy. And finally, I want to show you the larger one. This one I am going to take the steak knife and pop it. So plug your ears. Here it goes. And you just pull the cups. 
and look how that's just wanting to really stick. And this is going to pull in. Don't worry about that. Like I'm just going to, you're gonna be careful, but you can still push it back out. Okay, so we've got our indentations and I'm just gonna put my hand in there and smooth it back out and there we have it so you've got all these little ghosts who you can leave it just like this but I think they need eyes so we're going to next step hot glue the eyes on them so I have my hot glue gun and it is hot and ready to go now you don't have to use a hot glue gun like tacky glue would probably work just fine. I'm just hoping to have these eyes last for a few years and not have to be touched up and fixed. And so um, I'm, I'm hoping that the hot, using hot glue gun will just make it last longer. That's what I think and we'll just see what happens. So um, you, like I said, you can use buttons for these and I'm going to use buttons for my larger one but for these little guys I'm going to use little googly eyes and I want to say these are about three-eighths of an inch. I'm just going to put a dab of glue and we're just going to find a spot where it looks good. There's no exact, none of this is exact. All of this is really up to you. Now I'm going to get my hand in there and just press it in. And that guy's done. Look at that, how cute he is. He's so cute. Now, it could be fun if you wanted to like add a little bow or a bow tie, kind of dress him up a little bit. And we're just gonna keep going, adding more googly eyes. And honestly, these, again, these would be so cute without any eyes, just plain. But you can do whatever you want here. And make them all a little different. Again, I'm going to stick my hand back up in there. This one's a little more tricky. There we go. There's those eyes. And I'll do one more for the little ones. Let's see. I think I'll put it on this side. And there's not really a front or back, but you just have to have to decide what looks like <laughs> the front. And that's what it is. What you decide is the front is the front because we're being creative here. All right. So there we go. And then let me do this larger one. It turned out so good. So I'm going to do the buttons on this guy. And I think we'll just put one right there. And one right there, and then we got to press it down. A little bit hot, but that's okay, not too hot. And there he is. There's his button eyes. Now, um, on this one, we did one googly eye and one button. And then here's a larger one with a googly eye. Now these eyes um, had a sticky back, so I had to peel off the sticky back. I want to say they're one and a half inch eyes, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to finish putting the eyes on the last three, and then I'll show you how to tie the knot so that they can hang. I, I just had the biggest struggle stringing a string through this, and I thought I was filming the whole time, and I wasn't. So. <laughs> Let's do this again. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Okay, I want to find one. This one would work. That I used a little less fabric. Like this is great for hanging because it's it's just kind of looks like it's hanging. It's not as puddled as the other ones. So here's the struggle, guys. And the struggle is real. Um, this thread is so invisible that it's hard for me to see. So I'm just going to pull some off. And so if I were to do this again, I'd probably get like a thicker 
invisible like fishing line or something. This is this is thread for sewing and it is very hard to see. So um I didn't yeah see I'm trying to even thread the needle. It's a joke. Here we go. Here we go. Let me see. Oh my gosh did I do it? I did it. Okay, so now I'm going to, I, I created like a loop and I'm doing this only because I can't see this. It is so thin to work with. And so I'm just kind of having to figure out my own way to do this. Um, if it was thicker, I would probably not create the loop and just tie a knot on one end. And that way it'd be easier. You'll see in the end, I have to figure out how to get the needle off of this thing because it ends up double looping because I loop back over. So I'm going to show you what I kind of figured out, but I'm willing to bet you could figure out a better way using a thicker, a thicker thread, uh, the fishing line is uh, probably going to be ideal instead of thread. All right. So I am actually knotting this. I just knotted this three times and I think I'm going to knot it one more time because the cheesecloth um, is a really loose weave. I'm going to do it even one more time. That was four. Now I'm going for five. Um, it's a really loose weave and this will just go right through it. So, and I'm not expecting this to, um, to catch and stay that way, but I, I just need a little bit of resistance so that I can work with this. So I just threaded it through the top and now it's stuck on something. Where are we? Oh, here we go. So I'm not going to pull hard because if I pull hard, it really will just go straight through. Okay. So there's the resistance. So now I'm going to thread this back through near it, holding this up so I don't lose it, but okay. So I'm going to hold this up, but I'm going to let one of these go down. So I just have one loop. I just decided that right now. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work out, but I hope it works. Okay. One loop. There we go. Now I'm going to thread it up again a few more times to create, um, ah, some permanency because that first knot that I made that as I threaded it through, I don't expect that to hold. So I want to go kind of in and out, in and out, you know, like you're sewing a button on. so that I have something that it's grabbing on. Okay. So there we go. And I'm going to do this one more time. Okay. One more time. So I've got to find my, my bigger loop because I don't want to pull on that. And then I am going to tie a knot and last time I did it underneath it, that didn't work at all. It created a big mess. So I'm actually going to tie a knot up here because it's so invisible that why not? Why not just do that? And then what I'll do is after I tie the knot up here, I'll bring, and I'm tying this, you can see like three times, and then I'm going to pass the needle back through and then I can trim, trim this. If you can see it, you can trim it. There we go. Just dropped right through. So now I have this clear loop like that. I, I don't even know if you can see that <laughs> to hang this guy. And he did get a little caved in. So I'm going to come and press that out and there we go. He can be hung. You can use, um, like if you want to do this on your front porch, put a command hook up there and hang, hang these guys from the front porch. Um, you can hang them from like your chandeliers, your light fixtures. How fun is that? And then if you don't want to hang them, you don't have to, they can still stand alone. Just little mini, mini ghosts. 
Um, and then I want to show you one last thing. Okay, so I got these little, um, let me move these out of the way. These are, this is for the bigger ghost. I got these little, <laughs> oh my gosh, I have so many ghosts. This is nuts. Okay, these little fairy lights on Amazon. And I think it was like 10 strings and they've got a little battery operated thing. 10 strings of these for like $10, something like that. So unravel them and then you can just stick, just bunch these up and stick them in there and you're all lit up. Look at that. How cool is that? So these are going to be centerpieces for a uh, dinner that we are doing. Um, but these would just be such fun home decor, like anywhere. So I love it. Um, that's how to make the ghosts, little hanging ghosts or larger centerpiece type ghosts, um, for anything, honestly. And if you pack these away carefully, these will last year after year. I remember when I was growing up, my mom made, um, something like this, but it was actually layers and layers of cheesecloth. And she painted it black and, and it became a witch. She had a, a witch's head, which she put on top and she created arms and everything that lasted like 20 years. And it scared me. I remember that was the scariest thing when I was a little girl, it looked so, so creepy and spooky. So there we go. I hope you love the little ghost project. And, um, I, I would say that you can do this with kids, but you've got to supervise. I mean, they can enjoy the squishing and all that, but laying this out is actually not that easy. So, um, definitely uh, plenty of adult supervision. And, um, I think that's about it. Like if you have any questions, just leave questions below, um, in the comments and I'd be happy to answer them. But I think, I think that's it guys. So I wish you a happy Halloween. Thank you for stopping by. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And most of all, I wish you a very blessed day. Have a good one.